Have you guys been grinding your gears on the market and essentially not getting a lot out of it, not really getting those massive returns that you see so many people getting? Have you explored options before and basically just gotten overwhelmed with the amount of options that are out there to play around and really don't understand the fundamentals? Well, what if I told you that you could spend about the next 15 minutes learning how to spend that exact amount of time, roughly managing your account every single day, 10 to 15 minutes max, and then essentially making 80% returns year over year without really having to look much at the capital allocation, using minimal out of capital, and also leaving the rest of your portfolio where where you can invest in stocks that you're really wanting to buy. Buy the S&P, buy the NASDAQ, buy Microsoft, buy Amazon, buy Tesla. Again, leaving that rest of your capital returns to essentially be able to grow that wealth for you while making money on the side. Wouldn't that be a fantastic time? Well, today we're gonna to explain exactly how to do that. I've been trading options for a close to five years now. I've made hiccups through the COVID bubble on top of going into 2023. It was a rough ride, but I'm gonna teach you guys how to avoid majority of that and decomplicate the amount of trades that are out there. And simply put it, if you guys take a look at how many options there are there or different strategies, it can be extremely overwhelming, case and point. So this is an example of all the different option strategies out there, right? There is a plentitude of options. You got a short call, a short put, iron butterfly, iron condor, all these things, all these confusing things that people just make it so convoluted. You don't need an encyclopedia to understand options. There is a very, very quick fundamental rundown that we're going to spend the next three minutes running down what on earth options are, what on earth they actually do, and how you can actually start trading them within the next five minutes after watching this video. It's going to be a fantastic time, guys. So let's dive in. So here we basically have my portfolio that I've been playing around with. And right now I'm currently doing a NASDAQ S&P play, right? Leaving a little bit of cash on the side just because I see some turbulence in the market. I'm waiting for that to play out. However, that does not mean that I'm not going to be playing the market. And simply put, you need to understand three things. There is implied volatility, which we're not going to get into because credit spreads at the current levels that VIX are at and implied volatility for the ETFs, or we're going to primarily focus on the ETFs because we have statistical data that we can pull up. We're going to go over in this video of to show you the statistical returns during COVID, during 2016, during 2022, 23, 24, and how they measure out over a large period of time to result in 80 plus percent returns just doing this and actually beating the S&P at its own game while being able to give you optionality in how you move your money and how much capital you allocate to it. So simply put, when you hear options, think of two things really, delta and theta. Now, delta D, think of dollars. How much any dollars do you make for every dollar the, contra the underlying stock goes up? So for example, if the S&P goes up $1 with a delta of 10, I'm gonna make $10. Let's say I have a negative delta. So if you're on the put side or you're looking short the market, which we're not necessarily going to do because markets traditionally two thirds of the time go up. So we're going to stay positive side. But for those that want to dabble into the negative side of delta, it's the reverse, right? For negative 10 delta means for every dollar the S&P goes down, I'm going to make a negative uh, $10, right? Negative one times negative 10, beautiful number of $10. So the reason that I'm not gonna dive into the negative side of options is because too many people go down that rabbit hole and they just don't understand it, right? And we're gonna be talking primarily about credit spreads and you'll hear debit and credit spreads. So when you're paying with a debit card, think of it this way, that you're essentially just paying what you have, right? There's no way for you to get into the hole. Now, credit cards on the other hand, like we all know, you can get into a pretty deep hole and simply put, your broker is gonna say, okay, on a debit transaction, you give it's $50, but you can make 150. So you're gonna take negative theta. They're not wanting you to win. They want you to go to the dark side. They want you to go to the that theta side because then they get more of your money but they give you more like think of it like cash back on a credit card or points right they're giving you different things to incentivize you to go to the dark side and if you manage the dark side correctly it can be a beautiful thing so debit transactions statistically return more than credit right but they don't give you the optionality they don't give you the same way to manipulate them to maximize returns and simply put it, you can just infinitely roll a credit transaction for credit and essentially not do that with a debit transaction. But before we go down the rabbit hole, what on earth is theta, right? We covered delta, right? Dollars and theta. 
Theta is basically time. Think of T as time theta. Time is against you when you're in a debit transaction because again, they want it's a rigged game essentially because they want you to not get paid out, right? If I'm selling you this, right? I saw if in order to be a buyer of something, you have to have a seller. I'm gonna get that theta because I'm selling it to you like the credit side, but the debit side, you have to basically prove that it's gonna work out. The credit side, you don't necessarily have to prove that works out. I can basically have the markets go up while I'm trying to um, short the upper end and actually still make money. So it's a very interesting convolution with credit spreads because that theta is in your favor. So therefore, you got multiple things working for you. If you are a positive delta, the market goes up, that favors you. If nothing happens where you go sideways, theta favors you because you're losing that value on the debit side but gaining that on the credit side. So right now on my account, I have the S&P and NASDAQ positions open with positive uh, theta of approximately $3. I'm gonna get paid $3 every single day for nearly $1,500 worth of transactions. That's a pretty good daily return just for a small transaction, not to mention that it's $16 delta. So for every dollar the indexes go up, I'm gonna basically be going into this and looking to gain $16 per every dollar. And especially with the bullish tendency that the market is having right now, we're gonna be looking at positive appreciation and we're even gonna talk about, when we get into the statistical piece of this video, of how the bad drawdowns are liquidated throughout the entire thing and what you could expect. Because the statistics are gonna be based on, you're gonna continuously put that trade on. There is a way that you can just not put that trade on when you feel that we're not in a good spot, right? So let's dive into the markets real quick and then we're gonna dive into the backtesting system. So again, you don't necessarily need all of this on the market, right? The fancy indicators, if you guys are interested in what it is, it's Lux Algo. Link in the description below. I'm not sponsored by them. Neither am I sponsored by Tasty Trade. I just like using both their products. If you guys want to check it out, they'll all be linked down in the description below. Also, the weekend deep dive where we went over to know if we're bullish or bearish, the market will be linked in the description below. And if you guys want to stay up to date with the markets and know what levels you have to pay attention to, we release weekend deep dive every single weekend. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel with bell notifications on so you can know when that comes out. Also, we live stream. We're going to be streaming Thursday and Friday this week. So you guys can see, number one, we're going to cover Costco earnings on Thursday, Jerome Powell's speech, which we covered some of that in the weekend deep dive, and then Friday's PCE. So knowing how to play PC is going to be very, very critical. So make sure you guys are subscribed. But we went over these levels. We're above the bullish levels on the NASDAQ. We're above the bullish levels on the S&P. So that's why I initiated the trace. I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I'm just describing trades that we're actually taking on this channel to you guys. And also we have the Discord link in the description below if you guys want to check it out where you can see all these trades going on, future trades, because I don't necessarily post those on YouTube, but you can see if you're interested in that and just paying ideas off of us, right? So you get the best of both worlds with that. So let's dive into the aspect of Tasty Trade, right? And kind of into the backtesting system. So here we have different option backtesting, but we're going to primarily focus on the uh, credit put spread because traditionally markets are bullish. And then we're going to have another video coming out of how to roll options. That's going to be how you take a w losing position and basically turn it into a winning position but it does require some more capital. That's why we say options are not for those that have large uh, allocations to them. You should not allocate more than 25% of your portfolio to options in general, and you shouldn't allocate more than 2% to any single trade. You need to position size accordingly. That does not go away with option sizing. If you guys can't position size accordingly, options sadly are not for you. However, you can learn, right, to take stuff at small incremental risks. So we're gonna dive into the put spread because that's what you all are here for, right? So what is a put spread? Well, what a spread is, is basically you're buying and selling something to minimize the amount of capital that I have to allocate. So we're actually gonna be uh, selling the 23 delta, right? So delta is also, think of probability. 23% probability for this thing to go in the money, to go to that price. Not terribly bad. And let's say we sell this at like 53 days, right? Because we're gonna we're gonna be selling these at 53 days, uh, or what I currently have, and then 15 delta buy, right? So we're using the buy side to cover, which essentially means the transaction comes out to zero from a short and long perspective, and thus you don't have to put as much capital. If I was shorting the S&P, then essentially 
I would need close to $50,000 to do that. Whereas this transaction is only gonna cost you 800 to 1,000 dollars and credit, but you're not gonna make necessarily that. We'll get into that in just a second. We're gonna manage it at 21 days, meaning at 21 days to expiration, because all options expire, that's what we refer to as DTE. We're opening this transaction at 53 days to expiration, meaning I have 53 days before this option goes to zero. As a creditor, you want that to go to zero. As a debitor, you don't. So that's why we're managing at 21. And the reason for that is you have gamma, which is basically a fancy way of saying a crap ton of turbulence happens after 21 days. And I want to avoid that like the plague. So we're gonna manage at 21 days. We're gonna have a stop loss at 100% of the premium, right? So the premium is what we receive. And let's say we don't wanna give more than that plus back, right? So let's say I receive $100 premium, my $200 is gonna be my stop loss. Now you're saying, well, my profit of premium is only $6. Yes, but you're in a high probability transaction. So the times that you're going to get to have to pay that loss out is going to be very, very low. Remember, this is 15% chance of it going in the money, meaning your chance of profit is 85%. That's pretty darn good odds for basically doing nothing. So we're gonna limit to five trades because that's traditional what people have is they allocate maybe five total option trades in their entire portfolio. And then we're gonna run the back test. And this is basically gonna show 2016 all the way through 2024. So it also is comparing against the S&P because that's the gold weighted standard. If you can't beat the S&P by just investing in the S&P, the strategy is not necessarily worth it. We see this with a lot of debit transactions on non-ETF stocks. We talk about various different things. And also we included COVID with this because we wanted to show the max drawdown was the markets during COVID was 50% versus your max drawdown was only 30%. So you're already seeing a difference between the drawdown expectations and you're seeing the capital allocations 139%. The reason I said 80 is because you're not gonna catch every single trade. You're not gonna catch every single trade perfectly. So your variance of profitability is gonna vary. 80% is a very good capital return to have yearly, right? Yearly 80% of that capital that you're gonna be putting in. So if you're getting $1,000 in, you're gonna be getting $800 out in premium that you're gonna be basing and you're gonna do better than the markets. And also if you learn like I have over time to kind of figure out when to be bullish, when to be bearish, this is just assuming that you're just slapping these five transactions once they roll over. So you go from 53 days to 21 days and then you're done, right? So the end result here is that we're, the profitability of what we had is 16,000 versus the S&P that's 14,000. That's assuming that if you bought the same amount of capital into the S&P, what it would return over time. It's not the greatest return larger, but you're always chasing that yield. So hypothetically also with rolling options and having that ability and having that time friend beyond where you don't take that loss necessarily, and you just keep rolling it, right? So let's say you took a, you, the loss you were gonna take in 2020, you kept rolling it till the end of 2021. Well, congratulations, you made all that money. You never saw that drawdown. And that's gonna be phase two of this series. We're gonna talk about rolling options, but I really wanted to show you what the power of credit transactions were. Now we're gonna run the same back test with flipping it, right? So let's say you're doing the same exact thing and we're gonna to go to 21 days, right? We're gonna say 21 days and we're gonna go and basically say, we're not even gonna exit as specific. We're gonna just gonna take profit at, we're gonna say 50% for the debit. And then let's say we're gonna do take profit at 50% or 100%, right? So two to one ratio of the same transaction here over that set period of time and why it's not necessarily the best option out there. We already start off and we're seeing we're already in the hole. So debit transactions, unless you're buying calls, right? That is the ultimate, it's basically leverage on leverage. However, there are times that that can go against you and you have to have a large account in order to continue that premium basically pushing. But you already see here that doing the opposite transaction, the probability of that getting paid out, right? It's gonna be the flip side of that payout. And if you're, remember, when you're selling this credit transaction at 21 days, right? This is where all the gamma can be, where this is where all the craziness can be, where you can make the most amount of money, where people traditionally aren't holding these options for 53 days. They're not holding these options for more. They're basically buying the 21s and selling them once they get to a certain profit perspective. And you see here, you're just losing money holding it, right? The probability of this transaction 
going into the money at that point is extremely, extremely low. So you're just losing, 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 and losing money on these debit side transactions because number one, theta is against you. Delta could be against you or, or for you, but it's not necessarily in your favor, right? So if you're buying the 23 Delta and selling the 15, there's so low probability of this occurring, you just result in a negative return. And as you can see here, even if you get, we pass COVID, we pass the craziness on the market, the market would be significantly more up than you are. So again, it doesn't really make sense for us to play the debit side transaction. I can also show you guys, we're gonna cancel this right here. I'm gonna show you guys what the call side, just buying calls, which is just an epiphany of leverage. Let's say you're buying 35 Delta, right? We're gonna make 35 Delta at 45 days, or let's say 21 days. And then we're saying 100% premium versus 50% stop loss. And we run this back test. You're gonna see something completely amazing which is the market just goes bonkers, essentially with this. You just leverage and leverage and leverage. You can see on the capital you're putting in, that's because you're putting in a very small percentage and then you're gaining a lot. These calls can go infinitely up in value. So during the times that we have these massive bull markets where we don't necessarily have a washout for multiple decades, it is a very profitable trade. However, we as we talk about on this channel, the profitability of these trades are very, very, bad when bad things happen, right? You COVID, you take a 52% haircut, right? Versus that 30% that we talked about. So you see, are you willing to stomach that versus, and then having to put more capital into the market in order to get that further return, are you willing to allocate that, right? A lot of people will say yes, but they're not really up to the task when it comes to doing this. So if you guys want to know more about this, make sure you throw it in the comment section below of what exactly you guys want to see about options, right? What particular are you most interested? What wasn't the most clear? Also remember, we got the weekend deep dive link down below, the Discord linked as well as some of the trading platforms along with Lux Algo, all linked down in the description below along with the weekend deep dive. So make sure you guys check it out. I will have the weekend deep dive queued up over here for you guys to watch where you can know where to be bullish or bearish on the markets and basically make more profitable trades. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.